Kumal, thank you for having us. It's a privilege to talk to you. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. Today, we know that we had a meeting with the President of Kazakhstan, Kassim Jumar Tokayev. Uh, it was uh, during the meeting, it was noted that Astana, Astana International Financial Center and uh, International Arbitration uh, Center play an important role in resolving uh, financial disputes. So what other uh, outlines can you highlight from the meeting? Well, um, it was a very positive meeting with the President. Um, we were assured full support of our activities um, that we're pursuing. Um, as you can probably imagine, um, there's always a necessity for backup of an institution or of two institutions like the mm -hmm. AFC Court and the International Arbitration Center. And um, one key feature that we absolutely positively need to have on an international level is institutional independence. Um, in other words, you need, as we are functioning within this legal bubble within the second jurisdiction of the AIFC, we need full support and visibility that we are independent from the Kazakh state, that the court is independent, that the International Arbitration Center is independent, while maintaining obviously good links with um, the state, we need to be independent. And there are just some, some key decisions and switches that have to be flipped, if you like, to um, make sure that we are independent. Um, this is enshrined, so for example, in the regulations that govern the functioning of our two institutions. And um, we had a very high level talk with the president about that. And it was, uh, it was very pleasant and very productive. You've been a chairman of uh, IEC for a year now. What uh, results can you share with us? Well, I could give you a lot of results and probably um, your, your viewers would be really bored. But mm -hmm. um, if, if there is, how many cases yes, you I'll, try to, I'll try to concentrate on the main ones. Um, to give you um, just a pure bit of statistics, um, in the six and a half years that the International Arbitration Center is now in existence, um, we've had 2,346 awards. Mm -hmm. Last um, year it was 1,600. It's right? a lot, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, 2,600 2, um, is the, the that was the, the whole um, the whole range of decisions of the AFC court and the IAC. But alone in the IAC, it's mm -hmm. 2,346 um, awards issued. Um, those awards who were um, directed against parties in Kazakhstan were enforced to the 100% satisfaction mm -hmm. of the claimant parties, which is fantastic because of a very good cooperation that the AIFC court has with the National Ministry of Justice and the National Association of Judicial Officers. And all in all, um, we have been able to put the IAC firmly on the map of international arbitration on a global scale. Um, the, the key factors for um, something like our arbitration center to function is investor confidence and investment security. And we've very impressively actually managed to show that to the investors community. Mm -hmm. We're now having investors and their lawyers confirming us that if it were not for the presence of the International Arbitration Center here at the AIFC in Kazakhstan, um, they would probably go elsewhere with their investments, but they perceive us as a tool, a, an essential tool or a prerequisite of investment security. And that obviously is very encouraging. Kazakhstan is now currently uh, working uh, actively on uh, attracting uh, foreign investments. And how do you think uh, IAC uh, play a role in this uh, and uh, how much international capital Kazakhstan has attracted so far considering your presence here? Well, we're trying to extend the radiance. The, um, we're, we're very active um, in talking about ourselves, in making um, other people, other countries, um, investors, foreign investors known what we do. Um, but we are trying to extend our working sphere, our sphere of influence, our sphere of users um, in a very, um, very organised manner. Um, mm -hmm. For example, we have now um, nine 
offices and hearing facilities outside of Kazakhstan, first of all in the surrounding countries like Turkmenistan, mm -hmm. Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and all that. It goes as far as to Turkey, it goes to Georgia, it goes to Azerbaijan, it goes to Armenia. And those are just um, presences of the International Arbitration Center where people from that country, claimants or defendants from that country, can conduct hearings um, and uh, operate their proceedings, which is a great asset for them. So that's one way of making them known. As we talk, we are uh, lucky to um, conduct negotiations with parties in Beijing, China, mm -hmm. to have an office and a presence there which would obviously attract more, um, more investors or more parties to arbitral proceedings. Um, and the rest really is talking about yourselves, mm -hmm. um, operating the social media, um, feeding um, the interested part of the world with information on what we do. Um, down to myself um, in Germany, um, which is the fourth most important investor in Kazakhstan at the time, mm -hmm. um, in Germany, I, I go to visit everyone and try to talk about our center and try to um, even increase investor confidence. So I, I'm optimistic that we will have some party from Germany involved in arbitration proceedings. You've got a rich experience in uh, UN, German, uh, British and British and French institutions as far as I know. Is there any country difference that you can highlight about the Kazakhstan, about the investors uh, atmosphere here, about the cultural atmosphere here? How does it differ from the countries you already work with? I think what we need to do ultimately is get investors and parties from the United States of America mm. um, to Kazakhstan. <coughs> Um, not to litigate or to arbitrate from the outset, but you know how it is. If you have contracts um, between, say, an American party and a Kazakh party and something goes wrong, then a dispute has to be resolved. And it would, be, it would send the right signals and it would probably create a lot more business for this arbitration center mm -hmm. if we were able to go cross-Atlantic. Um, there's a number of other countries, um, maybe not so large on the international investment scale, um, whom I'd like to see, um, other European countries, for example. Mm -hmm. what, about, um, what about Spain? What about Portugal? Um, we have other um, interesting players. Um, Poland, um, I know that there's a, a rather strong link between Poland and Kazakhstan as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's limitless, really. You could uh, attract a lot of people. My own impression of working in Kazakhstan is um, extremely positive. Extremely positive because um, the, the manner, I think that's a trait of character of the mm -hmm. Kazakh people, to take on and take up people from far away, from a foreign country, goes down to a very old tradition of going around the country mm -hmm. in a caravan. And if somebody joins the caravan, they will take that person on board or into the caravan under the proviso that that person works and follows the routines and follows the rules um, of the people who are already in the caravan. Um, Maybe it's a bit far flung, but I feel very much taken up into one of these operations. And all I have seen in Kazakhstan is full support from everyone, an enormously welcoming and very warm-hearted population. And I actually uh, am very, very um, pleased to be back uh, every time I'm here again. And I'm longing to go to Kazakhstan when Germany becomes especially tedious. Um, it just has been, so I'm really I'm really glad to be here at the moment. Let us switch to the topic of the coming events and Eurasia uh, Arbitration uh, Week that will take place in Astana this week. What is the agenda on it and uh, what can we expect from that? Well, um, the uh, Eurasia Arbitration Week is a, mm -hmm. it's not a first launch, but it's a first launch in that size. Um, you may know that we started out with Eurasia Arbitration Days in September of last year, just as a, as a test run. Now we have um, 32 speakers from, I think, more than 20 countries here um, on a range of topics. Some of them are leading arbitrators, some of them 
are leading ac academics of countries around the world, not least from the United States, from the United Kingdom. Um, we have Swedish colleagues, we have a lot of people, arbitrators and others from the region, from Eurasia. And we're covering a wide range of topics, um, all to do with practical perspectives and applications of arbitration. For example, I'll be doing the first panel tomorrow with mm -hmm. um, four colleagues just on the regional perspectives of arbitration in Eurasia. Mm -hmm. There will be panels discussing um, ways to combat fraud and corruption through international arbitration. There will be a young arbitrators panel. Um, there will be all sorts of um, topics around the practical aspects of arbitration. The idea really is to have just not a normal convention on one specific topic, but to group together um, and to bring together people from all walks of arbitration um, and to get them into an exchange. And add to that, of course, the presence of our students from the Viz Primut, um, and that gives a very interesting mix. One thing that I expect to be addressed, mm -hmm. although it's not on our program, is the role of artificial intelligence. Um, that's a hot topic at the moment. I told you the president wanted yes, to know about it. Yes. Um, we, we are experiment, uh, experimenting with it. We are attempting to use artificial intelligence at the International Arbitration Center for transcripts. We're currently having um, attempts in place to teach a machine mm -hmm. a certain vocabulary that we use so that transcripts and translations may be made in real time. Mm. And um, that is a project that would really speed up arbitral proceedings. So that's something we're doing here. But of course, the, the challenges um, go far beyond that. And I would be very surprised um, if we didn't address that in most of the panels in some sort of aspect. Um, there's a lot of necessity for regulation. Um, ultimately, the role of artificial intelligence in anything judiciary, whether it's arbitration or whether it's a court case, mm -hmm. um, has to be limited at an ultimate stage where it is your nose or your intuition that gets a feel about the case. You know, if, I, if I'm an arbitrator and I have a new case, I look at it and I get a feeling from my experience, from what I know, from what I've learned, from what other people have taught me, how this case is likely to be going on. It's not prejudice, but it's an intuition, what is right, what is wrong, and what way one should look. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that artificial intelligence will ultimately not be able to do, and maybe should not do. Are you working with Central Asian states on a maybe exchanging uh, experience in this regard in, in AI? Well, we're, we're, constantly, we're constantly in contact, uh, above all, with universities, mm -hmm. um, both in Kazakhstan, all the great universities, um, and around. We're working with more than 40 universities worldwide, where, of course, in the law faculties, this topic mm -hmm. is researched and looked at. Um, so, yes, we're in constant exchange with parties in Central Asian states, but beyond that, and um, the exchange is not limited to any specific topic. So mm -hmm. yes, um, artificial intelligence will be one of those um, that, we, that we cover with them. Let me ask the last question. You already mentioned some prospect for Kazakhstan, uh, that we need to work more on US investors. But if to speak uh, internationally, I mean, more broadly, uh, what do you assess in the development of uh, international uh, arbitration uh, policy in the world, uh, taking into account today's changes in the world? That's a very good question. I, I actually love that question because it, um, it gives me an opportunity to, to say we are, we are able to do it. But first things first, um, the world's become very complicated and very vulnerable at the moment. And at the same time, in many countries, in Europe, in Asia, um, overseas, in across the Atlantic, you have statistics um, telling you that the number of court cases, the, the number of people going to the state courts to seek dispute resolution is sharply decreasing. Now, why is that? Um, I think it is because 
we have less and less time to care about normal proceedings administered by states after according to fixed rules. Um, there is no time and things become more complicated, not only in the IT sector. So a state judge who may be very well qualified in the law necessarily doesn't have to be qualified in matters of financial instruments, in matters of technology, um, in other matters that have become central to our societies and to international trade. And that's where arbitration comes in. A, you can see, you can select your own arbitrators. You can see, is this person not only a good lawyer, a good legal person, but also somebody who has a feel or experience with, say, an IT matter, chip production, or what mm -hmm. have you. Um, secondly, the arbitrators, not only our arbitrators at the IAC, but the arbitrator generally, understands him or herself as a service provider. So we try very hard as arbitrators to meet the expectations of the parties, both time-wise, efficiency-wise, um, in the, the style and the way and the intensity that we accompany and that we guide proceedings. So the probability of obtaining a faster and better reasoned, better investigated result in arbitration is much larger than in the state courts. And that is, I think, uh, one thing that um, will greatly increase the demand for arbitration. We mm -hmm. can see it in our own center, but it's a tendency worldwide. It's just, to put it, simple, to put it simply, things are too complicated, things take too much time, nobody has any time. Mm -hmm. um, executives, people who work in investing enterprises, they want no fuss solutions. They do not want to discuss with the state judge on whether this decision was made at that time. They just want something hands-on which they can work with. And speaking of working with, yes, one, of the most important, one of the most important features and advantages of using arbitration mm -hmm. is that after you have an arbitral award which has come together, which has been created, with the cooperation of the parties and by initiative of the parties. Mm -hmm. In most cases, you can actually continue doing business afterwards. And that's something really, really important. And I think that's where the future of uh, modern arbitration lies generally. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. And um, I look forward to seeing you again. Yes, and you can, you can check up on my statistics. Thank you, thank, <laughs> thank you, you, thank you. We will give updates. Thank you.